This is my 2007 Toyota Fortuner 3 liter D4D 4x4 and in this video I want to briefly explain how the 4x4 system on this Fortuner works. I've often seen people ask on forums and Facebook groups how the 4x4 system on these Fortuners work. Now the first thing to realize is that all these Fortuners, the 4x4 ones, has permanent four-wheel drive similar to the Toyota Condor before this and the 95 series Toyota Prados. So in normal drive you'll see this lever here it says H for high range, HL for high range center diff lock, neutral and then low range with center diff lock. So currently it's in H which means it's just permanent four-wheel drive and therefore all the drive goes to all four wheels all the time and it's open div front and rear and in the middle so if you lose traction on one wheel effectively all the power will go to that one wheel and you'll get stuck you do have a diff lock button here in the bottom but that only works when you have low range engaged so currently we're driving in four high, which is permanent four wheel drive. On this road, you'll never get stuck. Uh, we are in the Namaqua National Park. There's the west coast of the ocean. Is that the Pacific? Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean <laughs> geography. And this is just a normal uh, sandy road. It's not very soft but a little bit further ahead it does get soft and then i'll switch to low range if you do cross axle or loose rocks or fast corrugated gravel roads i sometimes switch it to hl which uh, will lock the center differential and that will send i think in this fortuner correct me from in the comments it will send 50% of the power to the front wheels, 50% to the rear. You can still uh, get one wheel in the air and then the power will go to the other wheel. So if the left front wheel is in the air, the power will go to the right front. But 50% will at least still go to the rear. So that is high range with center diff locked. It's getting a little bit thicker here, but and it's quite hot today. So the sand is soft, which... Um, makes it a little bit tougher going but we'll switch to low range um, shortly and I'll explain so this is what the camps look like you camp here on the coast and there's no one else in sight so here you can see the sand is getting a bit thicker so I'm just going to stop here I don't break in the sand because you don't want to create a mound in front of you I maybe already did that so you have to stop and then depress the clutch and put it in high low for of a high L first neutral and then low range you'll see the little light on the dash there before I take off I'll just put it in reverse so that we can compress the sand a bit and get some momentum to get over the divot I created put it in second gear and off we go so now i'm in second gear low range the race will pick up very quickly i'm already at 2000 rpm only doing 10 kilometers per hour and it's super easy to just drive uh, through the sand and now i can engage the flock but ideally you need to stop dead before engaging the flock and the flock can only be engaged that's the button there um, when in low range so I'm going to switch to third now and to give you an indication I'm doing 20 kilometers per hour at 2700 rpm so already I have maximum torque which is 343 newton meters uh, on this engine and I'm only doing 20 kilometers per hour I'm switching to fourth now so fourth gear with the main gear lever still in low range and I'm doing 30 now at uh, 17 so maximum torque available in fourth gear only doing 30 kilometers per hour i'm not 100 percent sure what the recommended maximum speed is some cars say 40 some say 50 it should be up here somewhere um, but if you do 50 kilometers per hour in fifth gear that's still fine 
we'll check just now what the revs are. So I'm going to fifth gear now. I'm, good. I'm in fifth gear, main lever, low range. And I'm doing 40 kilometers per hour, just over 40 kilometers per hour at 2000 RPM. And it's just cruising along nicely in the sand. I'm going to go back to fourth just to make it a little bit easier. So high revs, keeping the speed low. And then if it's really washed out and cross axle, then you might have to slow down all the way to second gear, uh, doing about 10 to 15 to avoid hitting your head on the, on the roof. And that's basically it for how this four-wheel drive system works on most permanent four-wheel drive cars, but most Toyotas work like this, the more modern ones. The older Toyota Hilux had a uh, was two-wheel drive, so it was only the rear wheels, and then you had to climb out and lock the front differential or the, the hubs, and then you can switch to four high, and then four low from there with no center diff lock. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with anything, if I missed it, or if you have any questions. And there is our camp down there in the distance. Cheers and thanks for watching.